Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo on the 2022 Porsche Cayenne and its 14-speaker Bose audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review, we're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio adjustments, inputs, controls, speaker locations, then we're going to head out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now if you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning and you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video, we've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And I recommend listening with headphones so you can hear exactly what I hear in the driver's seat. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. The base Cayenne still offering a lot of uh, good driving and actually quite a bit of off-road ability and towing ability. It's, it's got a lot going on. So even with its 3-liter V6 here, we've had a lot of fun driving it around. It's proven to be a very nice vehicle for all different sorts of situations. If you do want to see more, check the link in the description. We've got a DM review and some winding road coverage. Now we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed wave files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system, and high quality Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory defaults. Let's take a look at those now. I don't have my tripod with me out here in California, but we can take a look at this updated Porsche infotainment display right here. A little bit more color than previous displays, also nice and large, good responsiveness and good refresh rate. Let's head over here to the media, and you see a little bit of blank space here because we're using USB, maybe an album art would go there if you were listening to something on the radio, but you've got your USB set up right here. Let's go up here to Bose. And you're greeted with quite a few sound adjustments, starting off on the top, a surround adjustment that's going to make it a little more hollow and a little more around you. Let's turn that on and off. I'm not a big fan of the surround setting in this car. I've been listening primarily with it off. Then you also have a linear adjustment that's supposed to as I understand give you a little bit more true to recording sound a little bit flatter but I really don't like the way it's tuned in this car let me turn it on and off for you it takes away a lot of the low end and makes the high end's really shrill and in front of you. I don't care for how that's tuned. Below that, you have adjustments for bass and treble. No mid-range adjustments, so let's go through those. I'm actually going to back up the track a little bit here. Even though this isn't the top spec Burmester system, it's still disappointing to not have any sort of mid-range or subwoofer adjustment. I mean, heck, at the price of this car, I would be expecting a five or nine band equalizer, but bass and treble is all you've got for EQ. You do have front, rear, left, right fader and balance adjustments, a sound true mode that's going to, quote, improve compressed music format. So I guess that's, if you're listening to something like Sirius XM, that's going to try to enhance the sound of that. Shouldn't make any difference for our uncompressed audio here on USB. And then Bose Audio Pilot that's going to pick up and raise elements of the music as you get driving to make up for ambient noise. And that's it for audio adjustments. For audio controls in the Cayenne, you've got a volume scroller right here. It's kind of an awkward place. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm glad we've got a volume knob in general, and I like having scrollers. It's just not as intuitive as having it lower, something you can do with your thumb or your fingers. You kind of have to reach around the shifter, put it up and down, but at least the passenger and driver can both get to it fairly easily. Then you have click volume adjustments on the left side of the wheel. For track selections, you're even more limited. There are no physical controls here for tracks that I've been able to find, so you have to use the touch screen. And on the steering wheel, you can move forward with this button right here, but you can't move back. So I can click that to go to the next track, but there's no way to get back to the previous track. Unless maybe, do you double tap? No, do you hold? Shortcut button, steering wheel, next track. So you can actually change that button assignment. They have it set for next track right now. But yeah, no way to adjust tracks that I can see. Maybe if you were on the media screen, scroll through here. Is that media? Or here maybe? 
No, yeah, so uh, I don't see a way to do that. Let me know in the comments if I'm missing something. But yeah, a little, little disappointing for controls there. And then you have this scroller knob, but that's more of a control feature. Like if you're in the map, you can use it to zoom or something. For audio inputs in the Cayenne, you have your standard AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, wireless, and wired Apple CarPlay. Not 100% on Android Auto. I'll let you know in the uh, down below here if it is wireless. And an online radio option that we have grayed out right now, but it looks like we've got some sort of streaming. What does that mean you're missing? Well, there's no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack. Oh, I forgot to mention USB-C. So you have USB-C, but no USB type A. So make sure you have an adapter if you've got USB-A devices you'd like to plug in. Speaker locations. As I said, this is a 14 speaker system. Starting in the bottom left, you've got a door woofer here, one mid range there, two tweeter, three, four up front there, five, six, seven on the other side, coming into the back, eight, nine, uh, woofer and mid range there, 10, 11 on the other side, 12, 13 D pillar speakers here, and then 14 on the subwoofer. These might be tweeters, and then you might have mid ranges on the D pillar. I've looked at a lot of sound system specs this week, and they are flowing together a little bit. All right, I'm gonna get this stuff put away so that we can get out on the road.
the very, very top all the way down to the high end base, like the, the higher bases. It sounds really good in this car. I'm super satisfied with the crispness of everything you hear out of the snare drum hits and the guitar, everything coming through the tweeters and the mid rangers sound really, really nice. Where I'm disappointed is the, the bass guitar and bass drum hits coming through. Why isn't there more coming from the subwoofer in the back? Why are the door woofers trying to do so much work when you've got the subwoofer back there? Let them provide the power, let it fill the cabin. And I'm not getting that. I'm not getting it in my chest at all or any sort of satisfaction. I am gonna try turning linear on real quick while we listen to this and surround and see what it sounds like. Not a fan of that. Surround actually does satisfy that lower end a little bit, but it adds hollowness to the song, and it's not true to recording. That's not what you want, ultimately. But we will try turning the bass all the way up here in this song and see what happens. I'm, I'm a little concerned. All right. So it's a little sloppy already, but we're getting some motion from the back, which I like to hear. Ooh, do you hear that clipping? Nah, I'm loving that. It actually is quite powerful. I'm feeling it finally in my in my legs and in my seat, but I'm not not loving that distortion and that clipping. speaker Bose system here in the Porsche Cayenne. This one's tough for me and it's not tough from uh, how do I how do I describe it it's tough from a from an emotional standpoint because certain songs sound really good the high end especially like I said a very satisfying crisp if you're listening to something like a like a, a jazz song it's gonna sound really good in this car or or a light orchestral song that's got a lot of a lot of crispiness to it it's gonna sound amazing but what frustrates me the most is not necessarily the lack of low end power, because that's there sometimes, but it's the inaccuracy of some of the songs you listen to. We li listen to these songs thousands of times at this point. So when I'm hearing weird artifacts and low end elements of songs come through that shouldn't, or if I'm expecting them and they don't come through, that's what frustrates me. And, and that's what you shouldn't really be having in a luxury car audio system. 
Now, don't get me wrong, Porsche does provide the Burmester system in this car, and what I expect is that if you just like jamming out to music occasionally, you're gonna be fine with the Bose, but you step up to the Burmester if you consider yourself to be an audio enthusiast or an audiophile or whatever, so love to try that one out someday soon, but this one, I'm gonna have to give it a high, high-end B. I, now, I'm not saying that maybe back-to-back, -back, if I got in some cars and got out of others, that this might compare with some of the A systems. It's definitely about an 89%. I just don't love that inaccuracy. I don't love turning up songs that I like and hearing weird things. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Cayenne, check the links in the description, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.